Why, hello. It is me. I am back for some more stuff to do with personality and Myers-Briggs. I'm just sorting out my computer here. Um, I had a, a question on, my, on one of my um, videos to do with uh, why there's categories of... Um, okay, so someone, basically a friend of mine, Tim, was asking me why there was categories of... Uh, why the, the, it was the categorization was a bit weird about certain temperaments. So they were asking why we have SJs, SPs, NFs, and NTs. Because obviously the, the thing about that is that while NFs and NTs, you can kind of see that they're talking about, you know, that the, the, the theory is talking about the person's middle of their personality. So in other words, what the assertion is in this case is that they're talking about how NTs have something in common and how NFs have something in common. Why is it that then they talk about SJs and SPs? Because obviously that's not talking about the middle of their personality, so it's not talking about STs and SFs. Um, so basically I'm going to do a quick video to explain what that's all about or why that particular little theory is kind of existent or you know it's, it's a way of comparing people so basically what it is is that um, it was a it's a Kiersey thing which is to do with basically temperaments general temperaments and what Kiersey said or what he asserted was that basically there's a similarity between all NTs um, between all NFs and then a similarity between all SJs and all SPs so I'm going to just explain, hopefully quickly, why that is and how that works um, so that you can kind of see basically what the idea is and then obviously you know you can apply it to, to various different people. So basically, obviously, we, we have a really obvious thing where um, NFs and NTs obviously share the middle of their personality type. That's why they're called NFs and NTs. And that should be quite simple, even though... Some of you who would have studied the functions a bit more would know that um, half of the NFs share their functions and then the other half don't. They share opposite functions. Um, and the same thing of NTs, that um, they share half of their functions with, with half of the group and then not the, you know, the other half doesn't. So that's an interesting thing to talk about in and of itself. But we're talking about, because at the moment that's the sort of easy, simple thing we don't have to worry about that bit. What we have to figure out is why SJs and SPs have something in common, because obviously we're not talking about um, the fact that NTs and NFs do. So basically, with SPs, the reason that it was that they were categorised on their own and separately from um, from the NFs and the NTs was because basically SPs all have extroverted sensing. Okay, so what you'll find with SPs is that generally speaking, they all basically have a kind of commonality between them which is that they all share the extroverted sensing function okay so every n uh, uh, sorry every sp has extroverted sensing and what that basically means for all of these types is that they tend to be quite in the moment they all tend to be reasonably adventurous they all tend to be reasonably kind of into doing things right now and enjoying doing them right in the moment as they are right there and then and it doesn't matter if it's an STP or an, or an uh, SFP because basically they all live in the moment you know it, it, um, SFPs um, obviously introverted SPs are a bit different so say if you've got an ISFP then they're going to be more in their feelings and thinking about you know they're going to be kind of more kind of thinking about how they feel about something and then they'll be living in the moment. But they will be living in the moment. They're all going to be living in the moment. So, I mean, you might, for example, um, obviously look at the two opposite types of SPs, really, which is probably the typical ISFP who would be called the artist, and you might look at the kind of almost opposite of that in the SP scale, which is probably the ESTP, who is the doer. But they're all doing something. They're all living in that SE, extroverted sensing world of they want to create art or they want to create music or they want to be a performer like the ESFP, right? They all want to be doing something right now to make it really cool and make it, you know, to be really interesting right at that very moment. Um, 
Now, the other thing is, obviously, then we're talking about the SJs, okay? So the thing about SJs is that they all share the introverted sensing function. So basically, it's th this comparison is between the two sensing functions, really, because basically we're looking at people that have extroverted sensing versus people that have introverted sensing, and the, the SJs all have introverted sensing first. Now, they're obviously called the guardians, okay, as a group, right, just like the SPs are called the artisans as a group because they're all doing an artistic, you know, they're, they're using their hands to do a thing, they're using their bodies or they're using whatever to do a thing, which is why they're called artisans. SJs are basically all called guardians because they're all basically trying to guard a previous thing that worked before. So um, SI, introverted sensing, generally speaking, is living a little bit more in the past. They're kind of looking at something that worked really well before and then saying, well, why don't we repeat it? So institutions usually come out of people that, um, you know, that actually want to keep making that institution work in a good way and in the same way that it always has, you know. So it's like, well, this institution was great and it always has been, so we want to keep repeating it. And all SJs share that. So basically all SJs share the fact that they, you know, they think that things work well, and they don't see why they should have to fix them. You know, if something isn't broken, then you don't have to fix it. And this applies to, you know, ISFJs who, you know, they're kind of maybe more um, more concerned with people around them and they're more concerned because they're using their extroverted feeling. You know, they're more concerned with how people are and things. Um, but generally speaking, they still really want to kind of organise things in a way which is, um, how can I say, they're basically trying to organise things in a way that makes them feel most comfortable. You know, maybe they'll do things like they'll collect the photographs of their family in books, for example. You know, things like that. So ISFJs tend to do that kind of thing because they see a great value in having that information and keeping it safe. Um, and, you know, you may get ISTJs who might be kind of like the libra typical librarian type or something who are... You know, they're very concerned with making sure that the information is being able to be passed on because this information was useful in the past, it's going to be useful in the future, right? Which is, you know, true, as well as anything else. So that's really the commonality between those two things, which is why we have, we, why we have those four temperaments. And in short, that's why we have the four temperaments are the SPs are the artisans, um, the SJs are the uh, guardians, and the NFs are the idealists, and the NTs are the... Uh, oh, God, I can't remember what it is now. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Right in the middle of my video. The NTs are all rationals. Okay. So the thing is, is that the commonality between NFs is that they're all idealists. Even though their functions don't match, they all want to try to create an ideal world. Now, of course, there is something to be said for not comparing all NFs, and socionics kind of goes into ideas where you have uh, quadrants instead, so each quadrant has something in common, and they all, each quadrant is actually um, labelled by which functions they have. So, for example, as an ENFJ, um, I have the quadrant of you know my functions basically I have extroverted feeling introverted intuition extroverted sensing and introverted thinking so I share a quadrant with ISTP because the ISTPs also process those the world using the same things even though they use it in the opposite order so that's another way of comparing people all these things are ways of comparing people now obviously the NTs all share the fact that they um, basically share that they are all rationally thinking about the universe and the world around them, and they all want to try to influence it in that way. So obviously you've got the maybe the INTP who is um, basically called the thinker, and they might, may not be the most practical type because they're a perceiver and they're using their any to kind of like, they don't really necessarily get as much done as, say, an ENTJ, Right, but they're still rational. The ENTJ would probably be the kind of person who would be organising the thoughts of the INTP 
because the EST, the ENTJ knows the value of the thoughts of the INTP. So it basically that's sort of how it works. And it, it, again, you would probably get the similarity again between we can make the same comparison with maybe an INFP and an ENFJ, where the INFP has these fantastic, brilliant ideas, doesn't always manage to get them all finished and completed, and the ENFJ will be trying to kind of say, great, this is brilliant, and then they'll be kind of weaving it into something more useful. You know, they were all trying to do that. So that's basically a really quick rundown of why we have those four temperament groups and really how they work in general, in, you know, in general terms. Um, and if you've got any questions or interesting comments, then please leave them below. And um, hopefully this helps my friend to understand a little bit more about why we categorise them in those four different ways. Anyway, thank you very much and good night.